Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 10 of The Tavern, Shark Tank of the Metaverse, where Web3 Gaming projects pitch to get leaders and VCs in order to receive funding, but also direct and transparent feedback. You can also think of The Tavern as a bunch of grown-ups sitting home in their pajamas, gather and talk about pouring millions into video games. We are living the dream, guys. We did it. <laughs> but more seriously, uh, it's already episode 10, and when we started episode 1, we were in the middle of, the bear, of this bear market. Things were really harsh and tough, and I thought that by episode 10, things will be better somehow. But uh, it seems that, no, it's even getting worse and worse. Uh, so maybe as I, you introduce yourself briefly, you can tell us uh, like quickly what, what is your feeling on this year into Web3 Gaming, and what is your hot take on what's going to work? in 2023. Maybe Nico, you can, you can start. So my name is Nico. Um, uh, I'm an investor at the intersection of blockchain and games at Bitcraft. We're a, um, a games native VC fund. I've been investing in games for, uh, for years now. Um, uh, next to that, I also run a DAO called the Future of Gaming DAO or Fog DAO, um, where I bring together people that are building games to share new strategies, avoid mistakes um, about how we can use new technologies in games. And then, okay, how do I feel about the bear market? Um, I think um, FTX was pretty bad for blockchain games because a lot of like normal users, normal consumers, like non degens got really hurt by it. Um, and so I think because of that, a lot, like the mainstream adoption of blockchain games will just take longer. And I think for me, um, I'm I'm gearing up for a, a just a, like a longer bear market. It's going to take a while for people to regain confidence um, in you know the major institutions. Um, I also do believe that we'll probably see some more fallout. Um, but overall, I, I think this is you know crypto is a bunch of builders, and and this is where we thrive. You know, so um, I think the best deals will be made in the next year. I think the the best companies will you know execute the best in the next year. Um, and so uh, I'm excited for the 12 months to come, although um, we won't be showing off our, our big fat wallets and our very expensive JPEGs. Thank you. Will? A lot of the same. Um, I'm pretty excited. I, I see a lot of the, the same types of people who were hungry after the big mobile app craze that, that took over in 2012 when you saw a bunch of college kids running around saying, oh, if Snapchat can be worth a billion dollars, I can build something similar. Um, and for the ones that stuck around and managed to actually find their way in that space, I think you have the same determination kind of uh, showing itself, you know, with people continuing to build and raise and, and be interested in, in crypto and, and Web3. I think uh, there's a lot more of a focus on people trying to understand the tech at a fundamental level because they know they can't rely on predicting the next coin in their investor meetings and telling them which ones are going to go up and down. So you have a lot of people really opening up the book and trying to understand why blockchain. I think that's a big question that's being floated around uh, and, and, and it's needed to be answered. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I think we shook out a lot of bad actors. I think it's been a tough ride for, for everyone who's, you know, building in this space, but um, you know, hopefully that pressure, you know, uh, you know, make sure that whoever comes out the other side is, you know, is valuable. Thank you. Sam. Uh, hey folks, good to see everybody again. Um, so I, I'm Sam. I sit as a the gaming investor over at Hivemind, where I control everything related to metaverse type deals, um, and then I also build uh, Web3 gaming ventures out of Playground Labs. One of which we contribute to is the Capital DAO. Um, so uh, given current market conditions, I'm actually, you know, it, excited is a little bit inappropriate to say. I think, but having said that, I am uh, excited to um, kind of see that this is going to accelerate a very necessary UX uh, differentiator that we've we've really, really needed to see over the past year, but no one has leaned into yet. And that UX differentiator is like abstracting crypto away from the equation. And that's because now with retail sensitivity to the crypto problem inside of gaming, you're going to have games who are downplaying the crypto side. They're still going to be integrating NFTs. They're still going to be integrating tokens potentially on the back end, but they're going to be downplaying the UX to the point where they have to abstract the crypto experience entirely away away from the consumer so that it doesn't have that type of emotional baggage and that type of technical baggage attached to it. And I think games are going to end up being stronger for this because you're going to end up with games that are dedicating themselves 
primarily to gameplay and then financialization as like an afterthought almost in that capacity. And you have people who are just trying to abstract away the experience of crypto and just have it as an option for people to opt into it if they want to on the back end. All right, Ilya. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ilya. I'm one of the co-founders and partners at Sanctor Capital. And uh, we invest in back early stage teams in the web three space, primarily focused on metaverse and gaming. And I think I'm going to echo pretty much everything that's been said right now. I think, you know, as tough as this has been, I think it reduces the noise, um, especially, you know, for those that are around crypto Twitter. Uh, there's, you know, during uh, more optimistic market times, there's a lot of talk about kind of relative nonsense uh, that kind of obscures the actual tech and the actual development. And I think there's more time for builders uh, to kind of gather and push the envelope a little bit because there is re less pressure to kind of go out and kind of deploy in the next month and the next two months. Um, so there's a lot more time to experiment. There's a lot more R and D happening. Uh, you know, people mention UX infrastructure. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of room here to kind of really go towards kind of the, the vision of Web3 gaming and, and, and the metaverse. And I think that uh, the teams that use this time productively um, will will have a very interesting opportunity uh, in the coming times. That's true. And, and uh, as we know, the only people remaining now are true builders that are crazy enough to continue in this in this market. So we know that maybe there's less projects, but quality is rising. And that's how we come to today's speech. Uh, I will invite you, uh, Fernando from Bloomverse. So you'll be pitching today. You have three minutes. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let's start with the slide side a little bit, please. Um, hey, guys, good morning. So thank you for having me. I'll go straight into it. So Bloomers, we it's an initiative we've been working on for a little bit less than a year now. Uh, it's been self-funded so far. And in a nutshell, it echoes much of what you guys are saying. It um, It's a play to enjoy game, uh, which means that the earning aspect and play reward aspect, it's a secondary aspect to it. The main thing is a cool enjoyable game that players would want to play anyway uh another difference that it has is that the revenue stream or the business model that it has depends not on people buying more into the token or more into the nfts but having a separate uh independent revenue stream that can feed the reward pool for the players and uh, third it's um pushing gaming into a a new we're using blockchain technology to push gaming into a new era uh, push uh, in-game marketing and in-game in-game advertising into a new era as well. Um, the way we do that is that our business model um, has our business model comes from lobbies being inside the game and having interactive stores, brands, uh, service providers that have an experience inside the game and are integrated into the lore. Uh, this is a little example here of what we've done. Uh, it's an example for Domino's, Verizon, Nike. So you would go in there and you would actually play a mini game that's player versus environment just while you warm up to go to the arena and play against uh, actual players. So every time you interact with these brands and their mini game and you learn about new stuff that they're doing, um, it's a pay per click model. So that's creating the revenue that's going to the player reward. Um, pool so now if we go a little bit to the gameplay i can show you guys the um the pre-alpha demo uh i call it pre-alpha because you know there's so much to do and to integrate that i wouldn't even call this an alpha demo but you know you can already connect your wallet you'll be able to create a uh, create a seamless experience even if you don't know about blockchain and nfts we're not even trying to use those words right now just because we're going for mass adoption so you, you can have custody of your wallet if you if you log in with Gmail or Facebook or Discord. Like you don't need to know about wallets, but if you have one, you can connect it directly. There you could read like what NFTs do you have. And uh, the idea is it's non-token gated. So even if you don't have uh, an NFT, uh, you can just start playing, earning, create your account. And then as you as you go, your boots, your armor, your weapon, your helmet, those are all different NFTs. So those NFTs could represent the uh, twins in the real world in the sense that 
your armor can be come with a vitamin subscription the boots that you carry could be your amazon prime boots so the idea is that when people um, buy a product um, it's a little loud it distracts me but yeah the idea is that when you when consumers get a product a subscription or, or start knowing about a new brand or service provider their nft gives them status in the lobby it gives them power-ups in the arena but it also gives them a real life product that's uh, getting to their house or a subscription that they can download on their computer so that's that's why we're trying to revolutionize or how we're trying to revolutionize online shopping online marketing and in-game advertisement so right, this you is have to wrap it up it's been three minutes oh, sorry there you go okay i'm ready uh so what is your what are you, what are you asking for as a final uh, one the seed the seed round 300k is what we're bear market race 300k to expand the development team okay and thank tokens, you for, for fantastic yeah. So we saw a bit of the of the gameplay, as you as you heard. Everybody, this is a bear market seed round, uh, only for you, only today. Uh, so Nico, maybe you can start. Hey Fernando, thank you uh, for the pitch. What will make you? What's the reason users will spend time within uh, Bloomverse? I'm a behavioral behavioral analysis. That's kind of my analyst. That's my background. A psychologist and. A gamer, I've been a gamer all my life, so we have a pretty, pretty healthy game loop. So when it comes to habit forming, um, type of gameplay and and mini games, so what they're what they'll be coming to do is reach out to those dopaminergic relationships that we create in the game in the gameplay from the start, just like any other game uh, that's successful. And what makes you successful in doing that? my background my gaming experience and the discovery model that we're using to develop more and more things into the game so we're interviewing uh users and community members every week asking them open questions that even if they don't know exactly what they're answering in the sense that they don't know why they're answering it we're just giving them the quizzes it gives us feedback as to what exactly are they liking the most and what they want to see next so when we scale this discovery process and we start to interview 20 30 people a week we're going to have a lot of data as to exactly what's the most enjoyable part of the game and go in that direction so the community aspect of development that everybody talks about in web3 we're trying to capitalize on it with in that direction get data while we develop you said you had a games background did you build games before no i have a uh i have a startup entrepreneurial background myself uh, i've entered and exited pioneered in different industries but i've been a gamer this whole time i was a, uh, I was the first um mexican player to be a sponsor in warcraft 3 back when i was in, in college um by amd and well you know how it goes and then i kept playing i played dota 2 for 20 years you know so i'm pretty pretty loyal to one game but i've had yeah i've always been in gaming and and a little bit into professional gaming while i did other types of businesses and we're we're looking into what triple a studio we're going to work with as soon as we go after the seed round we're talking to three of them and then from there we would bring the the big name uh, game developer so to speak and so um final question what do we get back for putting 300k into bloomverse the the tokenomics model is getting developed by vispex which is one of our one of our launch partners uh they're they're the ones managing the the ido and uh, what you would get back would be tokens at uh seed round uh, price which is uh the lowest one there and i could share with you guys whoever is interested in the deck how the tokenomics would actually work to see how they really make sense in the in the bear market and you know if someone says well that's not how we do it we we want to talk about equity we're open to talking about it but we just don't have a specific percentage number or idea to throw out there it would be like a case by case okay thank you i'll pass it on to uh to will uh, yeah, Fernando, thanks for the pitch. I think I want to know more about what the, the project is. So it's a sandbox open world. You mentioned mini games is the idea that, you know, brands or, or partners could come in and develop their own games on top of it. Are, are you guys developing the games from scratch? Can you take me a little bit more through 
what the product is itself? Yes. So um, imagine walking into a, a shopping mall, right? Remember back in the day when you were going to the movies at a shopping mall, but you have to pass through all the stores as you walk there. And there's an arcade in the shopping mall that that's why you like going to that one in particular. So you walk into the shopping mall, but it turns out that everybody knows you. They greet you at the entrance. Hey, thanks for coming coming back. These are all the experiences that are available today. These are all your coupons. These are all your the, the new things, the new rewards for coming again today. So while you walk to the arena, because it's not all just about mini games. As you walk to the arena, which is a PvP, Counter-Strike meets Overwatch meets Dota style. While you're getting there, you're seeing all these little experiences that reward you if you do them, right? So that's where all the stores and the service providers are. So you're playing those mini quests and then you then then you go play for tokens against other players. So it's basically a, a virtual shopping mall with a fun arcade in the middle. Uh, that was one question, the product. Uh -huh. I think I missed another one. Well, I was, I'm just I'm just curious because in the initial pitch, you spoke a lot about how the brands integrate and how this makes a lot of sense for the brands. It gives them, a, you know, a, a nice engagement tool with their fans. When you look at your product and and you you, you kind of decide what your focus is going to be on, how much of it would you say is focused on an experience that users are going to want to come into and, and enjoy themselves in and and, you know, walk around and play and shop and everything? And how much is it for the brands that are looking for an opportunity to reach those users? Like. Do you have that dichotomy in your head when you're building out this product? Because obviously any brand would love to reach users, you know, in this capacity. But for a user, what's going to entice them to, to boot this up and, and jump in? So the um, OK, I get what I missed the, the first time now that we build it for them, by the way. It's not like a sandbox open, come and build your experience. We're, mm -hmm. we're already going to have, let's say, a template of at the, at the beginning and then scaling 10, 30, 50, 100 experiences that we cater and customize to each brand. But it's it's going to be the same Bloomberg's uh, experiences that we um, develop so that people actually want to play them. And then the brands just choose that. So I do have that dichotomy of how it's going to work. And it's not that any, either of them are priority. It's one mythos, one game, one lore. The lore itself carries the, the retail uh, stores and the service providers so we build those fun experiences that when you do them you earn rewards in the form, form of stamina so when you're gearing up kind of like Haxi infinity uses energy you gear up with stamina in these stores and you're practicing you're gearing up for the uh for the arena okay and when you look at other products out there the last question for me is there a, a direct competitor that we can kind of associate with or do you see yourself as one of a kind no, there, I have several competitors. In, in fact, there's a slide here um, that I can share you, with you guys later, whoever is interested. But yeah, we're non-token gate. So I, the, we compare ourselves to Sandbox, Decentraland, Mobile Games, VR Chat, and Metaverse Malls in general. So yeah, we're non-token gated, seamless ads, in-game shopping, asset ownership, blockchain technology, player rewards license base so they don't have to buy the real estate that's another big difference between us and our competitors we don't tell you oh 500,000 for this little space right here it's more like you can be here for four months if it works out for you great if it doesn't then you can leave right it's a rent sure okay well thank you yeah, th those are my questions I'll uh, pass it on to Sam yeah, Fernando, thanks a bunch for the pitch. Uh, I, I think I have two here. Um, one is a little bit more broad. Uh, so trying to understand you know, the business plan here, I'm obviously hugely bullish on in-game advertising. I think we've all seen things like Netflix is even launching their own games to advertise some of their own products. Like it's, it's going to be a major component of this industry. My question around this, though, is in the same vein that Will was kind of getting at, uh, you have to have a game first to draw people in, right? And it does feel like we're trying to build too many products here at the same time. Like this feels like Roblox meets Decentraland meets Counter-Strike. And each one of those is like a big problem to solve in and of itself. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking around staffing for this? And let's say even that you do raise $300,000 here. Um, time to market matters quite a bit. And on $300,000, I'm not certain that you're actually going to have enough manpower behind you to solve three problems at once, if you will. Yes. So if we raise, uh, when we raise the 300,000, it's basically to develop enough to get to the alpha, maybe 
you know, lay out the plan for the beta for our private round, right? Because this is a multi-million dollar development project, but I can't, I don't want to just come out and be like, hey, we need $3 million for this idea. Like we've been building it. I've been, the, the pre-sale has been us. We've been funded it so far. And that's why we're racing after showing proof of concept so that, you know, people understand what we're actually trying to build. And how do we address like those, um, this meets that that you're talking about so we are a play to enjoy game like we're developing the gameplay that i was showing you guys a little bit the idea is to just get players um to find to have fun in a game to start playing it and then that player base is the one that calls in a few brands a few web two brands that want to be involved in the game and now you can swap some of those products and, and rewards for tournaments of your favorite products from those brands so that brings more players and once you have more players you get more you start showing the data to the brands we want to start with uh 25 participants in the um when i'm referring to brands and we're probably not even going to charge them right because it's to start gathering data for other brands so once we have 25 brands on there and a player base of 4,000 people interacting with the uh, with the beta, so to speak, then we can go to a hundred brands and be like, this is a, this is what people are doing, how they're behaving and how much they're shopping. And this is how much it costs for you to be there. This is how it would benefit you. And from there we start licensing. I don't know if I went in the direction it, it was broad, but it's I okay. tried it's to. a broad question. Uh, that's all right. I, and I guess just to clarify the deal terms here again, and apologies if, if Will or Nico asked this and I missed it, but uh, the valuation here that you're looking at on the fully diluted val on these tokens, and just clarify if it's a fixed supply here at the end. It, it is a fixed supply. So we would be talking about the governance token, which is a bloom. Um, or is there a is, second token? There, are there multiple tokens? There's an in, uh -huh. It's an in-game currency, which is the bloomy. That's the one that people are already winning right now, like making right now as they play. That one then you use to, you know, get entry into a tournament. And then the, ter the many ways to burn it. It doesn't have liquidity. You know, it's more like the in-game have fun with it one. Um and uh, and then there's the the bloom which is a governance token which is the one that we're talking about so yeah there are two tokens and yeah the there is a the tokenomics were developed by vispex we could go into them to to see the the market cap and estimated market value and the seed the private the public the market makers and, 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 and what is what is that seed value on the total supply of the tokens that you're looking for here one cent is that is that uh no so it'd be it would be that price multiplied by the fully diluted supply of tokens okay let me open it up you got into an area that's not my not my area as chief innovation officer but and another think, another word oh, for this uh -huh. might just be the, the valuation of the token is is probably an easier way to say this not how many not the total cap of how many tokens there's going to be right but uh, more that's so how many, yeah. we can how multiply many tokens their yeah, how many tokens will oh, okay. you in it? Yeah, that's one billion. One, one billion, billion, that, and that's one cent. So, so it's so it's uh, that's ten million valuation. Ten right? million, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. I thought it was. No worries. No worries. Okay. Yeah. No. I, uh, for now, I think that's all my questions. I, I'll I'll pass it along to Ilya here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fernando. I'm curious how you're planning to publish this game, right? Like, you know. Everybody before alluded to, you know, you got to get the game out. What's the plan for publishing and how do you go to market with it? So the idea, what we're uh, planning for is to onboard people from Web2 onto the game without really trying to get more people into Web3 with the typical get into NFTs, get into tokens um, route that we don't think is working the best right now in the current market conditions. It's more about the web two participants, the brands and uh, service providers, the retail stores to get their community to play for, um, you know, uh, graphics cards, laptops, boots, hoodies, like stuff that people are looking for in web through with brands, recognized brands. Some of them I don't want to mention until, you know, we start doing it and finalize the deals. But the idea is people, to, gamers, to start playing 
for these products and subscriptions without even knowing that they're using blockchain technology and, and publish it as a new type of, of uh, online shopping um, product gaining loyalty reward program video game and right. using the, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about Web two versus Web three. I just like I'm 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 asking simpler. Like, how do they even find out about your game, right? Like any gamer, I don't care Web two or Web three. How do they even find out about your game? Co joined. I'm trying to look for that word in English. Like partnered, partnered or unified um, announcements between the Web three brands and us through the web page, through their web page, their Twitter. Um, I don't know if at some point we're going to get into commercials and stuff. That depends on the the strategy with the different marketers that we're talking to. But announcing ourselves with the brands and perhaps even with uh, with a shipping and logistics partner that we might onboard soon, a very big Web two brand. If they start announcing it, also it would be it would be pretty big. So yeah, public announcements joined with the brands. We'll get to the feedback straight uh away but just just before that uh you know one thing i had in mind when i saw your your demo is like you have all these stands and booth about food you know uh what i would do if i were you i would not partner with the brands i would just put a bun of booth about eating food you know pizza domino sushi whatever and then when people wait in order to get in the game you just you just let them the uh, opportunity to buy you know you use their affiliate program so it's available for free and then just can order the pizza while waiting to play the game and you can get revenue that's something fun i would do that if i were you anyway uh let's start with the feedback straight away uh maybe will because i know you have a hard stop in two minutes appreciate it uh fernando thank you for the the time obviously i'm excited to see the the rest of the deck as well um you know obviously having it in our hands a different story um you know for us we're, we're mostly focused on gaming projects you know we're a, an esports entity so i think we're looking for for things that are heavier on the the game mechanics um and farther along there uh and less on kind of the the more broader metaverse uh, sandbox component um even though we do have a, a minecraft branch um so for us it would be no at the moment but uh we'd love to see kind of how the game develops and, and obviously get the the deck in our hands to, to review more nico thank you um so fernando from my end um we've seen quite a few and i would say actually like a large number of metaverses um and we've until now held off on investing in any of them just because we struggle um we think that the current generation of metaverses is competing with the likes of fortnite um and i think what you will need to do any metaverse will need to do is have this very strong core game loop like this this one key reason this hook to get people in um and what you're building i think you know, with mini games, it's going to be tough, right? Making games is hard and making good games is, is even harder and making viral games, which I think, you know, a successful metaverse will need um, is, is even harder and also very much luck based. Um, and so for that reason, I think it's 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 not going to be for us uh, at this time. Yeah, uh, Fernando, thank you again for the pitch. Uh, I do think I'm one to one with Nico here. Uh, essentially, you, you you do have to build the poll factor first before you start pushing ads onto people. Uh, otherwise, they they won't you know they, they just won't participate in that environment. Um, so I think if you know if you changed uh, the setup a little bit to be game first and gameplay oriented first, and then you know have a game plan for how you can monetize down the line, that might work a little bit better. But I, I do think in the near term we would probably be out just because we would look for that core driving component for retail consumers to come into it in the first place. Um, I'll echo that. I think the the overall idea of having the game be kind of an onboarding element or an onboarding bridge to kind of the broader virtual world experience is, is something quite exciting. But there needs to be kind of a, a focus on the game itself. Without the game succeeding, it's hard to see any of the other elements succeeding. So um, I would prefer to see more of a kind of deep dive into the game and kind of a, a reason for why the game will succeed uh, because the rest of it kind of flows from that. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I think for now that's a no for us, but we'd be curious to see how you kind of progress. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Fernando, uh, in any way you, you keep building, I played the game. I'll, yeah. I'll play again. And uh, yeah, I think there's many ways to monetize and, and kind of, uh, Find your own way to like step by step grow up to come back into more favorable uh, times in terms of fundraising where funds will 
invest more easily or retail will buy more more easily so if you can manage your way until then where is this going to be a new big trend and surf on this new big trend that will come out there's definitely a pass so uh and we're going to help you there we 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 a couple of things working on as well so in any case it was a pleasure to have everybody for this new episode we'll see each other for a next one have a good day everyone have a good one bye see you guys hey, folks. thanks bye. Yeah.